So here we are for our first Face Your Fear Friday. Yep, that's right. This is Friday the 13th and we face a fear on Friday the 13th. bit of a hard time coming up for a topic on this because as I said in other videos I have faced a lot of my fears <clears throat> so one day when I was in the car and the music was cranking I thought just think about this what fear can you face here and immediately it popped into my head why haven't you made a decision on getting studio space you're losing your house and you have not made a decision yet you go round and round in your head and I knew instantly there has to be some fear at work there this is what I realized as I thought about it. Honestly, it might change my process. Maybe it's gonna be shared space and other people might get in the way of my rhythm and flow. What if I need to blast music? Um, it also is amount of responsibility. And the biggest thing is, is it feels like I was putting myself in a box. This is your studio, this is where you make art. Right now, I make art wherever I want to. If it's outside, it's outside. If it's in my home, it's in my home. If it's on my home, it's on my home. If you have a studio, doesn't that mean you're supposed to make art at the studio? So I decided to face this a little bit and talk to um, Karen and Jane about what it's like to have a studio and the decisions they made going into it and the type of studio space they have. It was a very interesting conversation and it absolutely helped me to decide which direction I'm going. Let's see what they had to say. Okay, so we're here at Blue Door Artworks with Jane and Karen, who are going to talk to us a little bit about making the decision to have studio space. First, why don't you both introduce yourselves? I'm Jane Hostetler. I'm from De Pere, originally from all over the place. And I'm Karen Stewart. And what kind of artwork do you do? I do, currently I'm doing quite a bit of abstraction. I work with cold wax medium and also some fresco. Um, so I like just working with uh, intuition and building and seeing where it goes. And these are your pieces right here. Mm -hmm. And, and um, the pieces behind that are figurative, those are my pieces. Um, I draw and paint mostly with acrylics now um, and a lot of figurative work. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm accomplishing here, but as we all are. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you choose the name for your studio space? That was actually took a little bit because there's five of us and um, we had a list, but it was you actually who came up with that. I came with a few suggestions to the group. My It was over Christmas. My kids were home from far away and were excited about the potential venture and we were brainstorming. And we liked the idea of a doorway. It's, it's welcoming. It's bringing you in. The color blue was more benign. We didn't want to um, indicate anything psychologically with the color red or green or what have you. So blue seemed to be fairly calm and benign and welcoming. Yeah. And we, I should point out that Jane is a graphic artist and has been for years taught graphics. So she was bringing more of that piece into it than probably the other four of us, don't you think? Probably, I do. yeah. I, li I love designing logos and I like the psychology behind them, so I guess I did mm -hmm. let, that was my one part that I could lend to the decision making. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've all had different things that we've had experience with that we brought to the table, but this was one of mine. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's an interesting connection that you make between design and name. A lot of people don't think about that, and it's actually really important. Yes. So, bravo. Yes. Thank you. And how long have you been here now? Well, we got the keys February 1st, so half a year. Half a year, yeah. We had about two months of transitioning yeah. and decision-making and getting things set up. Mm -hmm. We probably made the decision at the end of last year, right around Christmas, right yeah. before Christmas. Yeah. 
So it moved pretty quickly then if you made that decision around Christmas and then February you have the keys. How did you find the space? Well, that's a story. We were, three of us, three of the five of us were actually working at a different uh, place in Green Bay. Uh, how would you describe that place though? It was more community, larger gallery that offered studio space to artists mm -hmm. and uh, we got to know one another down there and started thinking about having a space that would be more in line with what we would like to see uh, for ourselves and for a gallery space that we could project our own work uh, and kind of have a little more control over what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And so a year ago, last summer, we started looking at a variety of places around the community and then I realized uh, it was really important to me to be close to home. I did not want to be having to drive too far to a studio. And I know this isn't that big of a city by any means, but I mean, I really wanted, like I wanted it in De Pere. I live in De Pere, I wanted it that close. And I was willing to actually leave the group if it meant mm -hmm. having it other places with no, nobody was having a problem with it. It was just everybody trying to figure out the best fit for them. There were a lot of thoughts as far as what kind of studio were, and location, size, uh, did we need to have a gallery space that wasn't that important initially, mm -hmm. but when this space became available, which is on a main street in a small city, uh, it thought we thought, yep, that could really be a benefit to us, but it wasn't on our the top of our list initially. Mm -hmm. And then it was Jane who actually found the space. It was really, really kind of by chance. I had spent uh, a half a day just going through some of the businesses in De Pere. Uh, we were getting a little frustrated. We weren't finding anything, and uh, we were okay with it. We could have stayed where we were, but I thought, you know what? I know like half a dozen ladies who have their businesses in De Pere. Why am I not getting out there and speaking to them? And so I went on a little rampage one afternoon just to say, hey, what's going on? Keep your ears open for space. And by the end of the day, we had a potential space. Um, I'd heard about a guy who had this little back room in, behind this restaurant that wasn't being used, so we thought, well, maybe that could be a studio. It was really small. He said, no, I'm going to open that up to my crowd, uh, crowded nights, but I heard that so-and-so down the road is going to be dividing her space and downsizing, which was this space. So I literally walked down. She was here, which she's often not here. She works by appointment. And it just happened. Yeah. It was wonderful. And so when you were making all of these decisions, was there a group budget in mind? Was there a budget for, you know, space, how much time? You know, we talk about budgets, but that's really for time, space, and money. How were those decisions arrived to? Was it going to be all equal? How does that work? I think we knew it would be equally split at that point in time, um, thinking initially it would just be a studio space that we would right. share and then collaborate with one another. We felt it was important not to be working alone in our basements at home, that sometimes we like that, but there were times where you just need to have that interaction with other artists uh, and collaboration. So initially the cost would have been probably a little less had it not been a storefront. But when the opportunity came for this uh, location, we just knew that it was a terrific location. We decided to venture into that, but equally split. Yeah, we didn't have a real clear vision, mm -hmm. I mean, at all. But I knew, yes, we knew that we were all going to spend the same amount of money. And of course, trying to find a place for as little as money as possible, <laughs> really. I mean, we're starving artists. It's a leap of faith. I'm <laughs> not starving, but we are. Yeah, no. Yeah. You don't make a lot of money initially. I mean, you could have a run of having some success and then not. So you couldn't really, none of us are independently wealthy. So we wanted to be able to validate the money spent with what we could produce. Um, we didn't, none of us really need to make a living, but we want to validate being here. So we are fortunate in that way. That's wonderful. So what were the unexpected obstacles, a couple of them that you are willing to share with us that happened along the way? What would be the first one that comes to mind? As far as an obstacle, I'm not sure. Or, you know... I just think there was a... With this type of place where you do have a storefront, I think there were more details and little things that had to be paid for that I didn't foresee. I didn't think about a sign. 
I never thought about a sign. No. Oh, and, and, <laughs> it never uh, occurred to me. Oh, yeah. We need a sign out front. We left off with... <clears throat> Okay, so we left off with um, some of the challenges that you're facing are technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and some of us have had some exposure to certain things with technology. For example, I, I knew how to get the logo design, things like that. So we were fortunate with that, mm -hmm. that I happen to have had that background. Um, one of our other members has had some PR experience, so she was very good at knowing how to do the press releases. Mm -hmm. But then we came against the website and um, choosing a website uh, builder or person to design it for us has been a little bit more complex. Um, I think we have both worked with pre-designed websites where we taught, you just plop in what they've got going on for you. But finding a website that, um, a person to help us build it, that looks artistic, looks creative, looks clean, looks professional. I think as visual people, we're kind of a little bit more particular with how it looks. Uh, we want it to be really user friendly and we're still in the process of getting to that end. So being that you, you have this business and it's a storefront, a website seems like a logical step to have. Was there a discussion um, amongst the artists here with the five of you, individual sites versus yes. you know, Blue Door Artworks? I have a site. Mm -hmm. That I have, so it's it would be linked to this one. It was mm -hmm. okay. At one time, right? I think, um, yeah, I had been designing a site. I was preparing for it, but I thought, well, I'll take this step first. If I feel as though I'm at the point in my production where I would like to have more personal visibility, I will again do probably what Karen did and create my own, but have that linked. Okay. For now, um, Facebook has been a friend to get some easy access to get work out there for people to look at. Um, but uh, the website can accommodate both. We did talk about the need for a website. Could Facebook support us enough? Would it be enough? Well, and your page has 455 followers, roughly, exactly, yeah. since I looked yeah. this morning, yeah. Yeah. which is actually very really very good for a newer um, Facebook page. So how has that worked out to get exposure for the studio space and gallery here? I think we've been pretty happy with it. When we had our grand opening, we had a soft opening for friends and family. And then we had a grand opening a few weeks later. We had what I thought was a fairly good turnout, several hundred people for each one or more. We didn't do a head count. And that was all through Facebook and some traditional postcards going out in the mail or dropping off or what have you. Mm -hmm. We had one TV spot on one of the local stations that did a little thing that week of and that helped us. But I would say we were dependent mostly on Facebook and working hard to keep that current and keep, our, keep pushing our name out there. So we did have a discussion as to whether it was necessary, but we do feel that going down the road we want to introduce workshops and, and, and events that uh, it would be nice to have a standing website for people to tune into. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what has been um, one of the bigger challenges with having five female artists mm -hmm. in one location? And how have you navigated that? Is it just through communication and talking things through? You know, we've had um, group meetings regularly, and mm -hmm. we are very, I think, democratic about how we make decisions. Mm -hmm. We put it out there. We've been transparent about how we feel about things. Trying to keep that line of communication open and let everybody be respected for who they are and where they're at. Everyone in here has had a little different yes. level of exposure to the world of putting your work out there. And I think we have have been pretty cognizant to respect each other's space and where we are at in our process. Um, would you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I, I agree with what you said. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we have different reasons for being here. Mm -hmm. um, one person really wants to sell, you know, and really makes a lot of things at to sell. To sell. Mm -hmm. And then another person just says, well, I, I'm just wanting to play. I just want I'm to just play. I'm just here to have fun. Just here to have yeah. fun, you know. Mm -hmm. So, there's, you know, we have, we're coming at it from different, different angles. angles. And then yeah. some of us are here uh, to just dig into the process. 
and see where you're going. And uh, and yet, I think we could validate each other's purpose mm -hmm. and respect it. It's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, as far as um, you have a storefront that might have been a little unexpected, do you have regular business hours? Um, how do you handle the logistics of being on a street that's a little bit busier and what appears to me to be a little bit of an artsy area? There's a, a number of different shops in this area that really seem to me to have a creative flair. So how does that work with having like hours and things of that nature? Oh, uh, to appear is in, in at the beginning of a big change and growth, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that's one of the reasons I'm here. I wanted to be part of that. Mm -hmm. I had taught art to students here for 25 years and always thought, geez, this, there should be more going on here. Mm -hmm. I think like a lot of towns, De Pere experienced sort of a lean years where Definitely. stores were coming in and they were going out just as fast as they were coming in. Mm -hmm. Right now, there seems to be a building going on. We're, we've been going to city council meetings and things to try to be a part of that conversation. Um, yeah, they're bringing in more creative clothing stores, mm -hmm. coffee shops, and art galleries, spaces. So it's really, they are respecting and promoting that kind of creative mm -hmm. business, which really encouraged us to then be more part of this community, made this particular location be more, more attractive for us. Um, it did change a little bit about the way we had to present and what we had to focus on besides our work. But we feel that's going to get into a routine pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and then we could just dig back into our work. You know, yeah, initially I, we had a lot of little things we had to take care of. I'm hoping to see more foot traffic out mm -hmm. here. It okay. isn't as much as I had hoped yet, but there are still some empty storefronts and things going on. Um, we do have hours right now. Um, since there's five of us, we have five shifts, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, Thursday, 11 to 3, and then 3 to 7. Same mm -hmm. thing on Friday, and then Saturday, 11 to 3. And, um, and by appointment, we appointment. always say we'll be here if you need us. We can uh, meet with anybody at any time. Mm -hmm. Walk-ins. If, if we're working, usually the door is unlocked and people are welcome to come in. And people do just wander mm -hmm. through if they're in the area. Um, we sit between a a hair salon and a home design reupholstery place and so we do get people walking through because they're mm -hmm. going to those two businesses. And both businesses have a creative flair. Mm -hmm. The salon is a very uh, upbeat, new, trendy uh, salon with a, a, a really nice large staff. There's a lot of folks going in and out of there. And then the covering, decorating, She's been here a while. She's got a really sustained business of a lot of clients that'll come through. And uh, so we kind of feed off of one another too in that respect, which was another attractive mm -hmm. component. It's a historic Baton building here in De Pere. Mm -hmm. it, just, um, it just shows you how much, you know, location, location, location matters mm -hmm. from multiple um, levels, the distance and the foot traffic and, and what you might have to change with that. So far, what is the best thing about this space? What has that been for each of you? Several things, really. I think a dedicated place to show your work um, and to work because at home, uh, the laundry, I'm throwing in loads of laundry and I'm back and forth or I start dinner and I get distracted. Mm -hmm. So when I come here, I feel the shift as I'm coming mm -hmm. in. Do you? Yes, absolutely. I feel like I'm, it's like going to a job. I'm coming here to work. And you can really dig in and, and concentrate, especially when it's hours where we're not open per se. Mm -hmm. um, and there are times where there are certain things I'll work on when I know we're open that I may not want to really dig into mentally. But I can work on. Mm -hmm. And there's other projects I'm thinking, I really need to go when I know it can be really quiet and I can really sink into this and not get distracted. So it sounds like it almost forces you to plot and plan your time, whether it be at home or here, much better. I think so. And I think that's a good thing. As artists, we tend to be more whimsical with our time and just kind of either get into a project and be at it for a whole day and let everything slide away, which can be good. Um, but I also feel that having the space, you feel more dedicated to be here more often. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and what has been the challenge of having this space? 
and again, you've had space before, mm -hmm. but you think anytime somebody is making a decision, I want studio space or I'm going to continue to work at home, it's kind of good to know like the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. So do you find that you make just as much art or is it less because you have to, you're going to be here to do it? And like, what is that downside, I guess? I think that's a really good question. Um, and from my perspective, I think the first few months, there were a lot of things to have to take care of. So I made less art than I would have normally. I feel as though we're just getting over that particular hump now that I feel personally that I can start really focusing on some serious uh, series of work again. With your graphic background, I think Jane really did uh, do the yeoman's job there. You, you did carry the bulk of the work because of you wanted to do the logo. You, I did. You were, yeah, it's you know, fine. next thing you know, you're designing the sign with the logo. I mean, things that it the rest, but you definitely had to shoulder most of that. But I let everybody else do the sweeping and the scrubbing. It's a trade off. It's a trade off. No, we all have different assets that we have, we bring. And for me, that was for the startup. Yeah, but down the road, I think we all have different talents that we're going to put to use more heavily at times. And that's just, we, we just recognize that. I think one of the biggest challenges for me has been the openness of this particular uh, room and uh, structure. Uh, the, the place we were at together where we met, um, I was kind of off in a little area with a doorway. It wasn't closed off by any no, means, but I felt like I was in my own spot. A little nook. Mm -hmm. And it was very different for me to just be kind of out in the open and wide yeah. open. And, and that took some adjusting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and you had said earlier, too, that the size that you work at can sometimes be a little bit of a concern with the space you have here, but that's maybe not necessarily a, a, a con to doing a studio so much as you've got to think about what you're working at size-wise and where you're at. Right. The woman who um, owns this building, she really has her finger on the pulse of her clientele and what it's like to be a business owner. and. Uh, I, I always think of when she said to us, look, if you just want to go and make art only, then go find a warehouse and... Okay, so just two last questions. Um, I'm really curious with the track lighting, which is gorgeous in here, and the work she did with the windows, was this a negotiation? Was she just offering to help out on this? Because a lot of people don't understand that when you lease or rent space, it is a negotiation and you can ask. So I, I'm just curious how that worked out for you. And if she volunteered, we like her a lot. Right, and she did volunteer. Yeah. So it, there wasn't a need to negotiate. Wonderful. Um, so she was very generous. And again, she's a visual creative person herself. So she really had a vision right off the bat that was really beneficial to what yes. we needed. And uh, it really just made it so much easier for us. Yes, she knows her clientele and she knew who'd be coming through here with some frequency or regularity and said we have to have the right space for those people. Mm -hmm. We have to have people who are going to pull out their wallets and actually <laughs> buy art. Right. you got to have a decent place for the mm -hmm. art and it has to look good. And I think a lot of people overlook how important incredibly important lighting is in a gallery when they do studio yes. space and I, I, I think it's important for both but truly being a storefront and doing that I think it's incredibly important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's really great we have the gallery lights on right now but we can turn those off and there's just two tracks of daylight bulbs it's really lovely and she was so um, really uh, she was really uh, great about seeing that vision for us and really there was no question there was no negotiation it was great wonderful um last question um one piece of advice or two from each of you that you would give to people considering making the transition you know like me to going from working at home to studio or gallery hmm. You know, I think it's been positive. I think we feed each other uh, at times. There are times when we all want our own space and we can do that because we still have places at home. It's not that we gave that up. And I think that collaboration, the community, being around other artists can be very valuable. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I don't really understand as far as people who are just at home with their, you know, technology and they don't reach out and, you know, 
like joining those kinds of visual artists mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. some of these things. I don't know how you can just make art in a void all the time, like by yourself, completely alone all the time. I, I don't know how people do that. No. I think it's really motivating to be out, but I think every individual can be different in what they need to be true. motivated. That is true. Um, but I do feel as though getting out with other artists helps you grow in your thinking and in your experimentation, um, helps you to be a little less intimidated, uh, gives you a little bit of strength to keep pushing forward. Uh, all those things happen when you're with a group. And yet we respect each other enough, I think, that we know the boundaries. Uh, and we're learning, too. And I right. think that's important that we understand that we need to do that. Would, and I, I obviously lied here, one more question. Would either of you do this type of space, maybe smaller, on your own? Or does it require you to have another four or five or whatever artists here with you? I think you could easily do it with two or three, or one or two. I think the benefit is having another person to kind of hang out and take some of the responsibilities okay. and also kind of have someone to just kind of push you along sometimes or troubleshoot. Um, so definitely you could do it with less. In this amount of space that we have, I think we're at our maximum space-wise. Absolutely. Um, but, um, yeah, I think you could do it on your own if you were that kind of individual. I wouldn't have wanted to do this type of studio on my own. No, no. I mean, just a studio studio, yes. But to have like a storefront, I don't think mm -hmm. I could have done that. There, there's a lot of different hats being worn here. I mean, yes. I, I, I don't possess all the skills to be able to do everything that's been done here. In the no, last I don't months. think any one of us would have. We all can bring in, in different backgrounds to help uh, balance it all out. And then the one areas here and there that we need help with, we just reach out. Wonderful. Any last thoughts from either one of you? I think it's been a great experience so far. Um, I'm excited for the future of what this can be as a collective group of women. Jane, you would like to do some teaching and I think we both feel like we would like to be on the forefront of bringing more art to this community. We really do. We have like some lofty goals on that. We do. And I think there, we, what we have noticed of uh, talking to the public coming in and not just the art community that has right. come in, the average everyday public that's come in, um, they want to learn about art. And I think we want to provide that opportunity, not only just to learn how to do art, but to learn about art itself and maybe have some art talks to help people understand art or know how to appreciate art and maybe take some workshops on how to actually make art. Um, there's a big interest and we'd love to be part of that community as well. Wonderful, well thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So after hearing everything they had to say and outside when video wasn't being shot, so outside of the video, having them ask me a few questions, I really realized Quite a few things. One, I can still make art wherever I want. Just because I have a studio, I'm not boxed and constrained to making art only there at the times I'm there. I don't need to plan for it necessarily. I thought that was a big bonus and really huge to me. I also knew that some of the things I didn't understand were things like signage and what about a website. None of these things ever crossed my mind with studio space. So I realized I had a lack of knowledge and now I've beefed up on that and I think even though it's skills that I had and that I might have known some of these things, I didn't consider them. So there were a lot of unknowns to me. They're not unknowns anymore. In fact, I think by answering this question, what are you going to do about studio space, I've actually answered other questions for myself. For example, I have a very stagnant website right now. It used to be very active because I used to post a blog post every single day. And now that I don't, for lots of reasons, I'm just not sure what's going on with the website and what am I supposed to do with it? What is the thing I want to do with it? Well, now I understand that if I do do studio space, I can turn it into a more vibrant and full website. It's not going to be just a gallery site. That was really a kind of mind awakening for me. I mean, think about it for a minute. We're artists, we have a website, we throw our artwork up there, and then what? Well, if I have a studio, there will be other things I can put up on the site. And I think that's really exciting and it's really motivating because I do like to share those things that I do. 
now it's just kind of hard because there's no actual plan. I just do what I do. And I know that that sounds not like how I teach, but there is actually a structure to it, but we're not dealing with that today. I also realized that the idea of having a storefront was really exciting to me. Like, that's just really cool to me. Um, I hadn't thought of that either. Okay, now that's on the list. I also have the confidence of knowing I've looked into it a little bit and have a better understanding of the waters I'll need to navigate. I also became very clear on the where. This was a hard question for me. I live in Milwaukee. And you know they say live in the big city. Milwaukee's the big city in this state. Madison, yes it is. Green Bay, yes, but Milwaukee is the big city, right? We're closer to Chicago and all of those things. But I'm not sure that I really want to stay in Milwaukee. And that's been a struggle for me. So talking to two gals who are in a suburb and have this really cute area they're in and a community that is very supportive of art, that's more than I'll probably find in Milwaukee. I mean, maybe I would, but Milwaukee is bigger. Maybe I want smaller. So I've really narrowed down where I'm going to look. If it's going to be in Milwaukee, it's going to be in a very small area of Milwaukee. And if it's outside of Milwaukee, I've got a couple suburbs picked. That's a whole lot better than southeastern Wisconsin being picked or only limiting myself to Milwaukee. This is exciting. I am really very excited about all of this. Now, I might have to delay my plan a little bit to find the right space. And is it something I want to lease or rent? Is it something where I want it to be dual use space where I have a home above and below? Because moving was in my plan. Maybe it doesn't have to be now. I won't know that until I actually start looking at the space. But it's really clear to me. I have other things to keep in mind before I do that. Like, what will the studio name be? That's something important to think about. Is it just my name or is it something else? And then once I have that, you know, maybe get some of the business cards made and start plotting out the website and get some of that work done a little bit ahead of time so that when I actually do move into the studio, it's not everything at one time. It might just be me or one other person. That's not five people to share all of the work. So planning ahead is gonna be extra beneficial during this time. I also realized that I want time to get to know the community I move into a little bit. Like I wanna take part of, the, of their association um, for their city if they have one. I think that the gals really illustrated to me how good the city has been to them, how supportive of arts they are, and that they want to be a part of that community. I think that's very important because again, artists should give back. Also, in discussing this whole topic with another friend of mine who is an artist, it became very clear to me that there's something else I should take into account. And that is that certain areas might actually have some grant and funding available to help me with that move. You know, things like exterior improvements to a building or, you know, um, art areas where the city wants to encourage art growth. So I have a little bit more homework to do than I did before and a little bit more legwork to do, but now I actually want to do it. I'm not avoiding the topic and I feel really good about it. I think that this will be, for this quarter, one of the best experiences I've had that helped to fuel my creativity. I no longer see the idea of a studio being limiting, which is what really scared me the most. I see it as being something that could expand the horizons of my creativity. And it was just with conversation that I did this. But I have to tell you, I feel way better about where I'm at on this topic now versus being kind of paralyzed before and just not knowing what to do and how to proceed or how to plan. I think that that's pretty much a win. So it's Friday the 13th. What fear are you going to face?